الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا تضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صل عليه الفاتح لما أغلق الخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Of course we're continuing our lessons of Shama'il Muhammadiyah The description of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, and before I begin, you know, you huh? Microphone's not working. It's not working. It's it's it's. I think it's audible, right? Yeah. Uh, I said before I begin the dars, I just want to say the people that are here in the masjid, they're very lucky. Allah subhanahu wa taala, He chooses who He wants to guide. He chooses who he wants to give nur. And a part of that ikhtisas of nur is that he allows someone to attend a majlis like this. You know, and this is not to praise this class or to praise myself, but you won't find this sort of class anywhere. You know, you won't find this sort of class anywhere. Nor the gems that are being discussed from like 10, 15 different books, you won't find it anywhere else. So to have the nur of being able to attend a majlis like this where we, discru- where we discuss the Prophet sallallahu very lucky, you know. I, when I think of myself growing up, I wish I had a majlis like this in my masjid. I wallahi. You know, like the best we had was someone who just was a half filled. Not even half of half is. You know, where like the tajweed wasn't 100%. And so to have access to classes like this is, you guys are, you know, you should be like, we should see not one row, not two, three, but just as much as Ramadan, honestly. Because these are, this is discru- discussing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today's chapter, we're discussing Babu Maja'a fi Na'li Rasulillah. What is narrated, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What is narrated concerning the sandals of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And you might be thinking, why are we discussing the sandals of someone? Because it's the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everything about the Prophet is important, even his sandals. You know, they say, Adatu Sadati, Sadatu Al Adat. Fakayfa bi Sayyidina, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the adat, the things that, you know, the day-to-day things that a person does, of the sadat, those that are, have lofty status and, you know, like, a, is a sayyid, the habits of the sadat is the best and like the, you know, the best adat. So how about our leader, sallallahu alayhi wa And Hassan al-Basri, the tabi'i, he said, وَنَعْلُهُ نَعْلٌ نَعْلُ بِذِكْرِهِ وَنَعْلُهُ, his sandals, نَعْلٌ, our sandals, Na'lu, we elevate bidikrihi with its remembrance. And he said, How are you saying this, Ya Hassan al Basri? And he said, Isn't it not so that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wished to speak to Musa in the dunya, he said, Inni ana rabbuka fakhla'na alayk. What did he tell Musa? Take off your sandals. When you speak to me, take off your sandals. And when you come in the masjid, you take off your sandals, right? Why? It's out of respect for the makan. You know, it's out of respect when you go inside your home, hopefully. You don't wear sandals, right? Because you respect your house. So similarly, Musa alayhi salam went to speak to Allah. Inni ana rabbuk, alayk. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah brought him all the way to the heavens. And he did not have him take off his sandals. You see? He has. Yes, yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make him take off his sandals. You know, this is the maqam of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, I have a lot of gems to share today, inshaAllah. Uh, you see, this is kind of like an imagery of what the sandal looked like. The shape of it. The shape of it, okay? The shape of it would look like this, okay? There's a few other illustrations. Either like this, either like this as well. This. I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, usually like the Sufiya, they have like a cap. I think this one does too. No, this one does not, sorry. But uh, if you notice that they have a sandal of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on top, you know? And this is to show like, you know, we put our heads underneath the feet of the Prophet Sallallahu Not out of ibadah, I'm not saying that, but out of respect. You know, uh, 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 Al-Imam Al-Iraqi, 
in uh, Al Hafiz Al Iraqi, he says in his uh, Al Fiya, وَنَعْلُهُ الْكَرِيمَةُ الْمَصُونَةُ طُوبَى لِمَنْ مَسَّ بِهَا جَبِينَةً He says, talking about the, the, the sandals of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, glad tidings Tuba, the one who, who, who gets to lay his head rest, uh, you know, who gets to lay, uh, who gets to lay rest his head on the sandal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. طُوبَى لِمَنْ مَسَّ بِهَا جَبِينَةً Is there anybody sandals now that you would put your head against? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahaba would. We would as well. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's some lines of poetry that a Shanqiti scholar wrote about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's ni'al. But since there's not really that many Arab in the audience, uh, I don't think I should mention it. Maybe some other time. Uh, there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim. Uh, after, you know, Bukhari and Muslim. Sahih Muslim. Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He was with his companions And he left And he took too long in returning back And so they got worried So they started to go look around for him Okay And Abu Hurairah Radiallahu an He was one of the companions That was there to look for him And he There was a garden A bustan And it was like There was walls So there was no access point But there was a You know there's like a You know there's like a There was like a, a You could say like a pond Or like a sort of Water that was going in and out of that uh, of that garden, and it's like a small, you know, it's like a small enclosure. So he went through it to get to the garden, and he saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, just to get the imagery, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Abu Hurairah." He said, "Yes," and so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Ya Abu Hurairah, idhab bina alayya hatini, fa man laqita min wara'i hadha alhaid yashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah musta." مُسْتَيْقِنًا بِهَا قَلْبُ قَلْ مُسْتَيْقِنًا بِهَا قَلْبُهُ فَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ. He said, "Ya Abu Hurairah, Abu Hurairah, go and take my two sandals, and whoever you see behind this wall that bears witness that there is no deity of worship except Allah Azza wa Jal, and of course, there's a Muslim with his heart, and he says it with his heart, not not a munafiq, someone who truly says it with his heart, then give him the glad tidings of Jannah." When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says this, what does that mean? 100% confirmed, this person is granted Jannah. There is no doubt in this, okay? And so Abu Hurairah, he left, and uh, he went, you know, and so the reason he gave him this is sort of as a sign, because if Abu Hurairah just said it, he said, go and, you know, go, whoever you see outside of the wall, behind the wall, tell them that you'll go to Jannah. They won't believe you, but if you have the sandals... It's like a proof. It's like, oh no, this is like this is the real deal. He, the Prophet Sallallahu told him to do this. And so Abu Hurairah left. And so the first person he sees is Umar radiallahu an. And we all know how Umar radiallahu an is. And he tells him this hadith. And so Umar radiallahu an, when he hears this, he hit him on his chest. Boom. And he fell. And he, you know, and he basically he was made to sit. And Abu Hurairah, he, you know, like he was not Umar, you know. And so Abu Hurairah, he almost began to cry because of how impactful the you know Umar radiallahu anhu did not mean to harm him okay but Umar radiallahu anhu is a strong man and if someone like Umar hits you you're gonna feel it right and it's not just like a physical pain it's more like like you know like for example if a parent does something to you it's just like it strikes you emotionally so it struck him emotionally and so uh, uh, he's, Umar radiallahu anhu uh, he said go back he told him go back and he said, فَرَجَعْتُ فَأَجْهَشْتُ بُكَاءً And uh, he, then he goes and he mentions the, to the Prophet ﷺ what happened and what Umar did. And Umar was following him and he went right after him. And he said, Ya Umar, why did you do what you did? And so he said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, by my mother and father, uh, you, uh, I swear, I swear what's, how do you translate, Bi Abi Anta wa Ummi? I swear by my mother's and father's life, you know, it's kind of like saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is even more valuable to him than his own mother and father. He said, I was afraid that if people were to hear this glad tidings, they would become lazy. So Ya Rasulullah, leave them and let them do amal. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَخَلِّيهِمْ Leave them. You see? But you see the hadith, the whole point is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was giving them glad tidings of Jannah. Amr said, Ya Rasulullah, this might not be the wisest thing. Why? Because then it might cause people to be lazy. Now imagine if everyone here guaranteed 100% Jannah, God knows what we would be doing, you know? And so it's kind of like encouragement to do amal, that you're striving for Jannah. 
And so that, uh, the, uh, this hadith is near, uh, connected to the na'al of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, we're not even going into the book, the chapter yet. It'll be very quick when we get into the hadith. But there's a few things that I need to mention. There was someone who, who was known as, uh, as the sahibun uh, na'alain. Who was the companion that was known as the, the person, sahibun uh, na'alain. The one with the two sandals of the Prophet. Which companion? Anybody know? Any guesses? No. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was known as Sahibu al-Na'lain. He was actually known as Sahibu al-Sahibu al-Siwadi wa siwaki wa al-Firashi wa al-Wisad. He was known as Sahibu al-Siwad basically because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would allow him into the vicinity of his home in his room without a hijab and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know he would not like he would not like not allow him you know, he would not like uh, say you're not allowed in here. He would allow him to come without a hijab. Uh, he would also help the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wear his two sandals. What he would do is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he would you know go to sit in a majlis, he would take off the sandals. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud he would take them and he would put his hands inside the sandals like this. You see, he would stick his hands inside the sandals like this and wait for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to finish. And then he would go down and he would put it on the feet of the Prophet ﷺ. You know? SubhanAllah, just think about this. The, the, uh, Ibn Mas'ud was given this, uh, it's an honor of Ibn Mas'ud uh, to have this. And he would also be the one that would give the Prophet ﷺ the miswak. He would also be the one to cover him when the Prophet ﷺ would do ghusl. Because they would go on the outskirts of the city. And he would be the one to wake up the Prophet ﷺ when he would fall asleep. Okay? Uh, and in this, the Sha'ir, he says, ومن هذيل صاحب السواد والنعل والفراش والويساد وهو ابن مسعود مبشر النبي برأس عمرو بن هشام الغبي. So that is related to Ibn Mas'ud. They also mentioned that Ibn uh, who was the one who was the Khadim of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Anas. Anas was also some of the people they held the, campaign, uh, uh, the opinion that Sahib al Na'lin was also Anas. I mean, they both had this virtue of serving the Prophet. And there's actually something very interesting that Ibn Kathir, not the Qari'ah, Ibn Kathir, the one who wrote the tafsir, you know, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, I think they have it in the masjid, the abridged version. Uh, in his famous work of history, Al Bidaya wa Nihaya, the beginning and the end, where he basically takes from the beginning of time until his time. And he mentions there was an Amir by the name of uh, Muhammad Al Mahdi, and he was, uh, you know, a Khalifa for the Muslimin and uh, Amir al Mu'minin, uh, Muhammad Al Mahdi. That someone came to him, a man one day came to him, okay, and he said, "These are the sandals of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So he came to this Khalifa, Muhammad Al Mahdi, and he said, "These are the sandals of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I give it to you, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, as a gift, okay." Uh, and he said, give it, give it to me here. And so he took it, and he kissed it, and he put it on his eyes, and he ordered them to give him 10,000 uh, dirhams. That's a lot, okay? He ordered them to give him 10,000 dirhams, even though it was g given as a gift. And so when the man left, uh, Muhammad al-Mahdi, he said, Wallah, I know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallu alayhi, never even laid eyes on these sandals. Rather, you know, even let alone wearing it. You know, he, not, he didn't even put his eyes on it, let alone wear it. But if I were to have rejected it, that man would have went to the people, the general layman people, and said, I gave him, I gifted him sandals of the Prophet ﷺ, and he rejected it. And so the people would believe him, because this is what usually... You know, laymen, this is what lay people do. As soon as they hear a rumor, they hear something about someone who has a big status, خلاص, they take it and they run with it. People love scandals. You know, even then and even now. Anytime someone is big, has a big name, they love scandals. They like to make things up. Um, and so the reason why I purchased it for 10,000 dirhams is because I bought his tongue for 10,000 dirhams. So that he would not go and tell people about me. So it was kind of the, you know, this is mentioned... Uh, it's kind of about like the aql 
and, and you know the wisdom of this, this Khalifa that in order to save himself from the tongues of people, he spent that 10,000 dirhams. Because then they would say that, oh, he doesn't love the Prophet, he doesn't follow the Prophet. Look, look at what the type of Amir and Khalifa he is. Uh, he makes a dua here, the mu'allif. So why not we say, Allahumma ja'al lana nasiban kamilan fi dini wa dunya, min al ilmi wal aqal, wal salahi wa taqwa, wal ghina wa tawfiq, wa min wa ghufranika wa hilmik, wa sitrika wa rahmatik, wa karamika wa ihsanik, bi fadlika wa rahmatika ya rahman rahimin. Ameen. There's so many books, you know, this author, he mentions that there's close to 50 books. 50 books that the scholars of the past have written just describing the sandals of the Prophet. Can you imagine? 50 different books just describing the sandals of the Prophets. I'll mention a few. Qurratu al-Aynayn fi tahqiqi amri al-Na'alayn There's Fathu al-Muta'al fi madhi khair al-Ni'al And it has many different, many, so many books, subhanAllah, that he mentions. I don't have to sit here and mention all of them. But this is kind of the muqaddimah introduction I wanted to give to the sandals of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now let's go straight to the hadith and we'll be quick to uh, quick with it, inshallah. Uh, he, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his sandals they had qibalan, they had two toe straps. Okay, imagine this is my uh, this is my foot. Okay, this is the big toe. He had one strap here and one strap after the middle toe, like this. And they would connect and they would be tied back to his, the, the heel. You see? That's how the Prophet ﷺ had his sandal. And you all saw the shape of it, right? In the book. So the shape of it, and then imagine, but obviously that sandal or that shape doesn't show the toe straps. But if you go online and you type in the sandal of the Prophet, it'll give you a close image of what it looks like. Uh, I think so. I think so, I, but it's a little bit different. It's not. Yeah, it's a little bit different. I mean, with time goes on, cultures they have lots of weird, funky sandals. <laughs> I remember I bought one pair from like it was like a Bedouin pair, and people were laughing at me when I came back to America, because it was red and it had like glitter all over it. <laughs> but it was like a Bedouin sandal. It was like very flat. Okay. Uh, point is, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, sallallahu alaihi. He had uh, two, uh, two toe straps on his sandals. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallu alayhi, uh, one time Anas radiallahu anhu, he came out and he presented to us two hairless sandals. Hairless, they were made of leather. Okay? This also shows us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallu alayhi, he never cheaped out in buying things of quality. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't buy cheap sandals. He bought good quality, two hairless sandals. Uh, you know, uh, made of leather, sandals So what do, what do we learn from this? When we buy good sandals That's not considered Or not sandals But shoes and things Of that nature We're not wasting money Unless you're buying Like Jordan 5's That are like You know like Some specific colorway That costs like $2,000 That is 100% wasting money The young guys I see you guys You know I'm watching I've been watching your feet You know They love the kicks You know But I'm talking about quality you should not, you should not be uh, stingy when it comes to buying quality shoes. You know, something that when you walk on it, you know that it's good for your feet. I'm sure you've experienced when you when you buy bad shoes, bad sandals, it's harming your ankle, it's harming your feet. Maybe sometimes even you know when your foot is like really closed in together, it's restricting your feet. And for if you do this long term, it's going to be detrimental to your health. I mean, for me, I like getting minimalist shoes or staying barefoot. That's just my personal preference. Minimalist. Or barefoot, you know, uh, it's just if it's better for your feet, you know. If you notice, all the people back then, or people, you know, uh, in, in like villages, or you know, people from back home, their feet are much wider, and their feet are they look strong. But then when you look at the modern person, modern man or modern woman, their feet are so narrow, and it's not, you know, they don't really have any balance on it. I'm sure you've seen this. It's because we're constantly wearing shoes, shoes that's restricting our feet, restricting our feet. Especially if you're young and you're growing still, you know, try to spend some time barefoot as well. Don't just be wearing shoes all the time, all the time, all the time. Uh, okay, uh, continuing on, he said that he saw the Prophet وسلم, with two hairless sandals, uh, and he and then Anas radiallahu anh later said that these are the sandals of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And another hadith, he said, I have seen you wear talbas al nial al sibtiya. When a person says, uh, means halaqa ra'sahu. 
right? It means like when you shave your head. So it was hairless. Again, it was made of leather. Uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, uh, he said, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam wear these hairless sandals and perform wudu in them. So I love to wear them too. You see? The Sahaba, even though, is this from Sunnat Ibadah or Sunnat Ada? Ada. Yeah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he wore sandals because he was a prophet or because he was a person of that time? A person of that time. But does that mean there's no virtue in wearing something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wore? No, it's still recommended. You know, like for example, I'm wearing this amama. Does that mean I'm like, I, I'm, I have a, I'm backwards and I'm following something that they followed? No. Who is better to follow than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? In all things, he was the best example, right? And that also means, but this is again, this is mandub. This is recommended. Huh? And, and looking good too. <laughs> right? So it's, it's, uh, it's mandub, it's recommended. Some people, because they have no respect for the Prophet Sallallahu they might say, oh, there's no reason. Abu Jahl did it too. That's not how you talk about the Prophet Sallallahu you know? Like, I mean, that is an aspect. That's why we call it Sunnat Ada. But that doesn't mean it's not recommended, right? It's still something recommended to do. Um, so Ibn Umar, he used to say, I used to love to wear it because the Prophet wore it. And look, he said, the Prophet Sallallahu would do wudu in them. Meaning that he would take his feet wearing the sandals and he would wash them. Do you see? Whilst wearing his sandals. So he would wash it whilst wearing, uh, whilst wearing the sandals. So that we learn a few things from this. Can I do wudu and wash my feet with my, with my sandals still on? Yes. As long as your foot is completely getting wet, can you wear like, you know, those, uh, those sandals that we have in the bathroom? Can you wash your feet with that? I hope you don't do that because then it's going to be wet for the person after you. But uh, you could potentially do that. And this also shows that, there, like I said, it was hairless. Meaning there was no like wool or, you know, some, uh, something that if it were to get wet, it would catch dust or, you know, some ghubar afterwards. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, another hadith he mentions that I uh, the Prophet the one of the companions he mentions that I saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam pray in sandals that had new soles sewn onto the old. Okay, so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam كان يصلي في نعلين مقصوفتين وكان يخصف نعلين. We know the hadith. Remember the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to serve his family. You know where he would like do things and he would do khidmah of his family. One of the descriptions is, كَانَ يَخْصِفُ عَلَيْهِ He would fix his own shoes, you know. And so this also shows that the Prophet ﷺ was very resourceful as a man. You know, and this is something that we should also apply. Um, uh, one thing, you see, كَانَ يُصَلِّ فِي نَعْلَيْنِ Can we pray wearing shoes? Yes. Can we pray wearing shoes? Yes. Yes, we can pray wearing shoes. But don't, this doesn't mean that you know, you're, you're going in a farm, you're walking all over dung and then you, you want to pray. <laughs> your, your, your shoes have to be clean. You can just wipe them off you know, and, just, and pray in them. There's, there's no ishkal. But if you know there's dung on the floor, akramakumullah, and then your, your shoe is all dirty, and then you're praying, of course, that's not allowed. Uh, can you wipe over your shoes as you would wipe over your socks? Yes, yes, you can wipe over your shoes as you would wipe over your socks. The same conditions that take place on your sock would take place on your shoe. If I wipe over my sock and I take them off, does, is my wudu valid? No. If I wipe over my shoe and then I take off my shoe to pray, is my wudu valid? No. The condition is you wipe over it and then you pray in it as well. So the conditions that take place on the shoe are the same ones that are existing on the sock. The last lesson we covered fiqh of socks. I'm not going into this again. Sorry guys. I see some people looking at me. No, not today. <laughs> The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Let none of you walk whilst wearing a single sandal. Either wear both of them or remove them both. Don't walk with one shoe, okay? Either wear both of them or don't wear them at all, okay? And this is also, subhanAllah, you know, some of the scholars, they, you know, when you, you know, for example, you go, you find one of your shoes and then one of them is scattered somewhere else. From the adab of following this hadith is that you wait till you find both of them and then you wear them. You see, to that extent, we should follow the Prophet sallallahu You know, obviously that's not what's intended, but because of our love of following the Prophet, we make an effort to putting both of them on at the same time, not finding one and then waiting and walking around because it's scattered sometimes and finding the other one. We should be careful of this point. 
The reason why you shouldn't be wearing one shoe and not the other is because min khawarim al muru'a. It gives an unsightly appearance, right? To wear one shoe and not wear another, or like wearing one sock and not wearing another. Uh, it is undignified. Uh, it makes walking difficult. It's not good for health to constantly walk unbalanced, right? To have one different type of shoe to another, it makes, uh, it's not good for your health. Uh, it makes walking difficult. And Qadi uh, Iyal, he mentions, this is how shaitan walks. This is how shaitan walks. So we should not be following shaitan when it comes to this. Um, also, it could cause unwanted attention. You might, be the, you might be made a mockery of, you know, and people might start making fun of you if you do that. Again, this is something that uh, is mentioned. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu he forbade that one should eat with his left hand or walk with only one sandal. You shouldn't eat with left hand, and you should not walk with only one sandal. Uh, this is an adab that we can follow as we leave. When one of you puts on his sandals, what foot should he begin with? The right. When he takes it off, which one should he begin with? The left. So the first one that goes in is the right one. The last one that goes out is the Right one, you see? So right, left, left, right. This is from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu This should become so habitual for us that when we wear our shoes, there is no chance of us putting left first. Always put right first, then left, then left, then right. You might think this is so insignificant. Again, like I said, this, nothing of the Prophet Sallallahu and his actions and his attributes and his characteristics, none of them are insignificant. All of the Sahaba, they tried their best to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in everything that they did. When it comes to the Na'al of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, he followed him in the same way by having two toe straps. Umar, radiallahu anhu, he followed him by having two, two toe straps. Ibn Umar, he followed him by having two toe straps. The first Khalifa not to follow uh, in the two toe straps was Uthman, where he kept only one. Again, like I said, it's from Sunnah Ada. It's not an obligation. Uh, they just love to follow the Prophet Sallallahu And again, as cultures change and style change and you know, the, maybe <laughs> the, how they would make it would change, then that's why maybe Uthman kept it to one. Uh, uh, if you guys still have time, I was thinking maybe we could do a salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ten times. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد 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 السلام عليكم بركاته